And we also have in Global Ports a partner that could uh, negotiate better rates with the cruise ship operators. You would note, for example, that um, Antigua got an increase a few years ago, uh, what, about two and a half years ago. It didn't come easily. You recall that um, Carnival had started to pull the ships and so on. The usual thing that they normally do whenever countries try to get an increase. Um, and I have to tell you, you know, the cruise, sec cruise ship sector is very usurious and it's an area in which the Caribbean leaders will have to come together eventually and to force these cruise ship operators to agree to a significant increase sometime in the future. We'll give them sufficient notice and we this say to them, look, you know what, from about 20, 25, as an example, and taking into consideration that they would have taken a hit during the last um, 18 months because of COVID. So you don't want to push them too hard at this time, but we need to come together, set a timeline and say, look, the base will move from 10 to 15 US hours per head or from five to 12 um, US or six to 12. We're gonna have to double those rates in them because the return that we're getting from, you know, from the, um, from the sector is not sufficient. In fact, it does not justify the investments that countries have to make in building out the port infrastructure. And the only how we can get this increase is if all the Caribbean countries come together and make a demand for an increase. The interesting thing is, you know, they will generally scoff at even a one dollar US increase in the head tax. And um, you know, when you look at the remuneration package for even their CEO, their CEO takes over maybe about eleven, twelve million US dollars a year. And to give a country um, an increase of maybe about a few hundred thousand dollars a year, they'll scoff at it. But Individually, we don't have the power to effect the kind of changes that we need. And therefore, it is important that CARICOM leaders come together and um, deal with this issue head on and to make the demands and say to them, we're giving you notice. You have a 36-month period newsroom. to do whatever you have to do um, to factor this additional cost into your pricing. But we will not accept any less than, let's say, 10, 15 US dollars per head. If we don't do that, I want to tell you, this will continue to be an underperforming sector mm -hmm. that will continue to burden our socioeconomic infrastructure without the commensurate um, returns. So you know, I guess that's an issue that we will have to um, accelerate um, discussions about and for us to get um, a firm commitment from heads. And this is not an, a new issue. It's an issue that you know, would have taken up the time of heads um, for, uh, for many years, many decades. But in terms of getting um, all of us to come together and to stand firm on a policy this decision in terms of pricing for the cruise sector, uh, for some reason, the cruise ship operators have been able to um, pick off heads after heads because, you know, we're so insular in our thinking that we don't understand that um, we could have a firm position that could be beneficial to all. And I will state here categorically that Anti and Bobby this stands ready to join with the rest of um, CARICOM to um, pursue this type of um, initiative in which we have a carve out so that we can get more benefits of people. Mm -hmm. You know, this sector, uh, let's put it this way, we should not um, be seen as, you know, mere bystanders um, who have to put all infrastructure in place for tourists to come, spend a few hours, leave, and they don't spend a lot of money. And, the little head tax that they have to pay that it is such a nominal sum that we can't even cover the interest costs. 